Coming up on this edition of Out of the Blue. The estate of James M. Buchanan gives MTSU more than his Nobel Prize medal. A $2.5 million bequest is announced during a celebration of Buchanan's remarkable life on the MTSU campus. MTSU debuts nine videos to promote each of the university's nine colleges. The PSAs are the handiwork of an MTSU graduate. Get a glimpse of how your college is being promoted. And in this month's cover story, MTSU honors the Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame's six inaugural inductees, including some familiar faces to Nashville. Plus, more graduates join Tennessee's best. Hello and welcome to another edition of Out of the Blue. I'm Mike Browning. We're coming to you this month from just outside the Paul W. Martin Honors College Building here on the MTSU campus. When James M. Buchanan graduated from what was then Middle Tennessee State Teachers College in 1940, little did anyone, including himself, know that he would go on to win the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1986. A native of Rutherford County, he was proud of his heritage and the people of Murfreesboro and MTSU are very proud of his accomplishments. Five months to the day following his death on January 9th at the age of 93, the Buchanan family gathered here on the MTSU campus near the Honors College to celebrate his remarkable life. Dr. Buchanan's gifts to the Honors College testify that he never forgot either his own humble beginnings or his ties to Murfreesboro and to Middle Tennessee State University. Like many others here today, I'm proud that such a man and a scholar found warmth and meaning in this community and in Middle Tennessee State University. Dr. Buchanan graduated in 1940 from what was then Middle Tennessee State Teachers College. By the way, he had three majors, three majors, okay? Uh, English, mathematics, and social science. There was no economics degree uh, available at the time. We're celebrating, no question today, a remarkable life of a gifted individual. In honor of his service uh, in, in the United States Navy during the war, uh, Dr. Buchanan was awarded the Bronze Star. Jim Buchanan, affection, for and connection to and pride in this place became stronger and stronger and stronger as the years went by. I see, he left me the Nobel Prize, but in a couple of minutes I realized really seriously what it was. He knew where it would be displayed, right here. And I'm very pleased to announce to you today that on Monday of this week, MTSU received a check in the amount of two and a half million dollars from the estate of James Buchanan. That we intend to use portion of this bequest to establish the James Buchanan Lecture Series applying the ideas of James Buchanan in today's world. Ladies and gentlemen, this lecture series will culminate on the occasions of Buchanan's 100th birthday in 2019, after which we intend to make a printed and video version of the lecture series available as part of the Buchanan's paper. James Buchanan famously would ask graduate students, is any of the work you're doing today going to matter in 100 years? Well, if you think about all the people that have led to today, that to have led to this building being here, all the way back to honors program, everything that led to this moment, everything that, that June and Ron and Barbara and previous presidents here and 
John Vile and Phil Mathis, Dr. McPhee's vision. If that question is posed, will it matter 100 years from now? I think the answer is a resounding yes. But at the end of the day, and the end of his life, <clears throat> MTSU had a truly special place for Jim Buchanan in his heart and mind. The Nobel Prize will be displayed here at MTSU because I really think he chose and hoped for it to be that way. The Nobel Prize, Bronze Star, and other memorabilia are on display at the James E. Walker Library. MTSU's new $147 million science building continues to take shape, adding yet another dimension to the growing campus. Computer-generated fly-through video released earlier this spring shows how the science building, now under construction, will look when completed in the summer of 2014, with move-in planned in the fall and ready for classes in spring 2015. It shows the building interior spaces and how the structure will change the landscape of the campus. Currently, work is focused on the building's exterior, including roofing, metal panels, glazing, and masonry. Installation of the building's heating and air conditioning systems, plumbing, and drywall is also underway. The new science building will provide more than 250,000 gross square feet of teaching, faculty, and student research laboratories and collaborative learning spaces. MTSU and Nashville State Community College have signed a partnership agreement that makes it easier for NSCC students to get a bachelor's degree in criminal justice at the Southeast Davidson County campus. The agreement was announced June 11 during a ceremony on the Nashville State campus. Beginning this fall, MTSU professors will teach classes at Nashville State's satellite campus at The Crossings, where the community college's branch campus is located. Officials from both colleges say the partnership helps students with more convenient and affordable access to an advanced degree in criminal justice, a popular program. MTSU has signed two more agreements with other community colleges to help students transfer credits to a four-year institution. A new pact with Motlow College helps students majoring in childhood education turn their associate degrees into bachelor's degrees. That agreement was signed by President McPhee and Motlow College President Mary Lou Apple on April 17th. A similar agreement with Columbia State Community College was signed by President McPhee and Columbia State President Janet F. Smith on May 2nd. It comes six months after the two colleges signed a pact, allowing nursing students to upgrade their associate degrees to a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from MTSU. Congratulations to MTSU's Moon Buggy Team's best ever finish in the 20th annual International Great Moon Buggy Race this past spring in Huntsville, Alabama. MTSU's Team 1 topped all U.S. teams and finished just behind the University of Puerto Rico and a Russian team from the International Space Education Institute. By placing first among U.S. college teams, MTSU bested teams from Ohio State, Texas A&M, Auburn, and Tennessee Tech. MTSU Moon Buggy teams have placed as high as fourth overall and earned two safety awards since entering the competition in 2003. Again, congratulations to advisor Dr. Saeed Farudistan and the engineering students in basic and applied sciences. MTSU's Marketing and Communications Office has nine public service announcements on each of the university's nine colleges. The masterfully crafted 30-second commercials are the work of a graduate of the master's program in recording arts and technologies. Matt Knudsen shot and edited the videos while his wife Denise provided the vocal messages. MTSU first opened in 1911 as a school with the specific purpose of educating teachers. I got a lot of help from the deans about um, just kind of figuring out what what is the core message or, or core mission of each college. Broaden your world at the College of Liberal Arts at Middle Tennessee State University. Uh, each video is 30 seconds. That was a challenge, uh, trying to distill the, the, the entirety of a college down into 30 seconds. Do you want to make a difference? Do what fits you and accelerate the path to your goals. As an artist, you want people to see your work, and uh, so it's great to have to have my work on on a you know university website. Getting a degree that matters is just one step away at Middle Tennessee State University. 
The nine videos will be featured on the college's websites and displayed at MTSU athletic events and college fairs. MTSU Honors College graduate Eric Geis is headed to Israel this fall after being awarded a prestigious Fulbright scholarship. Eric Geis will study and conduct research at Technion Israel Institute of Technology. The MTSU physics graduate conducted research on unmanned aerial systems in the College of Basic and Applied Sciences. The Buchanan Fellow was featured in MTSU's Honor College magazine this spring. Guys is the eighth student at MTSU in the past four years to receive a Fulbright. An MTSU Honor senior has received a prestigious German fellowship in science and engineering. Brett Bornhoft of Lee Summit, Missouri, will serve in a 12-week internship in Germany this summer. The fellowship for students in the U.S., Canada, and the United Kingdom who are studying in the fields of biology, chemistry, physics, earth sciences, and engineering. Well, MTSU's Director of Women's and Gender Studies has been awarded a prestigious fellowship. Dr. Tina Johnson has been named an ACE Fellow for the 2013-2014 academic year by the American Council on Education. Johnson is one of 50 fellows selected nationwide. An English professor, she has served as Director of Women's and Gender Studies since 1998 and was recently named the recipient of the John Pless Faculty Award for Excellence in Teaching, Research, and Service. Dr. Cliff Ricketts, nationally known for research in alternative fuels, recently became the newest recipient of the President's Silver Column Award. As you can see, Dr. Ricketts' wife, Nancy, helped to fix the award pen to her husband's lapel in a ceremony at the Vocational Agriculture Building. That's where Ricketts has spent much of his 37-year teaching career at MTSU working on alternative fuels, from biodiesel to hydrogen. He recently traveled coast to coast in two cars fueled by hydrogen produced by solar energy, what he calls driving on sun and water. Ricketts becomes the sixth Silver Column Award honoree since President Sidney A. McPhee established the award in 2004. Well, who's that on stage with Charlie Daniels at the Grand Ole Opry? Well, yes, it's our own Dr. Sidney A. McPhee, MTSU president, giving the country legend a special presentation. Daniels' name will now be on a scholarship awarded each year to a student in the Recording Industry Department at MTSU's College of Mass Communication. Winchester native Troy Gibson was an intern in Al Gore's Washington office when the former vice president served as a member of Congress. Gibson is a 1986 alumnus of MTSU and has followed Gore throughout his career. Gibson has written a book about his former mentor entitled From Carthage to Oslo, a biography of Al Gore. Troy Gibson met Al Gore on a chance encounter in the summer of 1976. Gore had made a surprise announcement to run for U.S. Congress and was on a campaign swing through rural Franklin County, Tennessee, where Gibson was staying at a general store run by his grandparents. He just stopped by with one of his campaign aides, and uh, I just uh, had the chance encounter, as I said, and uh, uh, I just immediately took a liking to him. Impressed with his ability to light up a room and already interested in politics, Gibson volunteered to work for his campaign. Uh, in that summer of 76, of course, he went on to win over a field of uh, eight or nine candidates. In the 78 campaign, Gibson volunteered again before entering MTSU as a political science major, then went on to intern in Gore's Washington office. Well, I was basically a caseworker, and uh, by that I mean uh, we would... Uh, go through constituent files. Gibson's book, From Carthage to Oslo, shares intimate details on Gibson's work with Gore during campaigns for Congress, vice presidency, and the ill-fated 2000 presidential campaign that Gibson's chapter titles Supreme Injustice. We, we have a, quite a bit of coverage in the book on that. Mm -hmm. We'll let the readers uh, make their own uh, uh, decisions on that, I guess. Despite their great friendship, Gibson says the Monica Lewinsky affair did adversely impact the Clinton-Gore relationship. The Monica Lewinsky affair, I mean, let's, let's be honest, it, uh, it upset a lot of people. It upset Hillary, obviously. Uh, uh, and even though President Clinton, uh, in my opinion, will go down in history as one of the best presidents we ever had, 
uh, at that time, his popularity went down. Gibson's own personal opinion is that the Lewinsky affair also affected Vice President Gore's popularity in his 2000 campaign. But Gibson writes in the book, as the vice president has stated, he takes responsibility for the 2000 defeat to George W. Bush. Green Party candidate Ralph Nader became a huge factor. Uh, I think he cost uh, uh, the vice president New Hampshire. Gore also lost his home state of Tennessee. In hindsight, Gibson suggests the campaign might have been run differently. You know, president Clinton was, was trying to give him advice, and, uh, but um, you know, Vice President Gore is his own man and he wanted to run his own campaign, so I don't think he has any regrets on, on that. Gore later won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007. Winning the Nobel Peace Prize was uh, kind of a moral uh, victory for him. Gibson says after much thought, Gore concluded that running for president again would not be in his future plans. I don't think it changed him as a person. I think after the first six months to a year, he, he kind of got over the emotional pain. Now certainly he will never uh, get over it totally. Gibson says these days, Gore maintains a schedule almost as busy as when he was vice president, generation investment management CEO, on the board of Apple and advisor to Google. Many Tennesseans don't know or have forgotten what the Carthage native did for the 4th and 6th Congressional District. Gibson's book can serve as a reminder. We'll be right back. And great to have all of you here at this school, which has meant so much and means so much to the life of uh, communications. Being True Blue is helping others to reach their potential. My name is Daryl Freeman, and I am True Blue. I am True Blue. As a member of this diverse community, I am a valuable contributor to its progress and success. I am engaged in the life of this community. I am a recipient and a giver. I am a listener and a speaker. I am honest in word and deed. I am committed to reason, not violence. I am a learner. Now and forever. I am a Blue Raider. I am a Blue Raider. I'm a Blue Raider. True Blue. Do what fits you and accelerate the path to your goals. MTSU is the best place to finish your degree and get ahead in your career. Create a course schedule around your life, not the other way around. Take classes online or in the classroom. And only take the classes you need by transferring credits you've already earned. Getting a degree that matters is just one step away at Middle Tennessee State University. Being True Blue is doing more than what's expected. My name is Ben Jones, and I am True Blue. At Middle Tennessee State University, we are devoted to student success. We offer the advantages of a major comprehensive university with the care and attention found at a small college. We are a community that believes in learning, growth, and service. We hold these values dear, and there's a simple phrase that conveys them. I am True Blue. I am True Blue. I am True Blue. MTSU's College of Mass Communication is the third largest in the country, so it's only fitting that the Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame should be housed right here on the MTSU campus. This spring, MTSU honored the Hall of Fame's six inaugural inductees, including some familiar faces to Nashville television, with a ceremony at the Murphy Center. Graduate student Susan Nogis was there. Our first honoree today for outstanding service to broadcast journalism in Tennessee is Chris Clark, inducted into this first class of the Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame. Chris Clark was the lead news anchor at WTVF News Channel 5 in Nashville for 41 years. Ann Holt is inducted next into this first class of the Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame. Ann Holt has worked nearly 40 years in the television industry. I'm so deeply honored by today's recognition. And I want to thank the board of the Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame, first of all, for selecting me to be a member of this inaugural class. 
For outstanding service to broadcast journalism in Tennessee, Dan Miller is posthumously inducted into the first class of the Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame. Dan Miller is perhaps best known for his work at WSMV, Channel 4, Nashville, and was one of Tennessee's premier broadcasters before his passing in 2009. John Siegenthaler is our next inductee into this first class of the Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame. Mr. Siegenthaler was appointed and as administrative assistant to United States Attorney General Robert Kennedy and was involved during the Freedom Rides of 1961. Chris. And a special privilege and great to have all of you here at this school, which has meant so much and means so much to the life of um, communications. For outstanding service to newspaper journalism in Tennessee, Dean Stone is inducted into this first class of the Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame. Mr. Stone has had a long and illustrious career that has spanned more than 60 years, beginning with a journalism degree from the University of Oklahoma. While still in school, he worked at the Daily Times in Maryville. He eventually was named editor and is a vice president in the corporate organization. Mr. Stone is completing his 63rd year with the paper. And uh, I've been very blessed. I lost my wife 40 years ago. And our son, who was nine, we grew up together and he's here with me today. Bill Williams of Paris, Tennessee, is editor emeritus of the Paris Post Intelligencer. He has been with the newspaper most of his life, having started in his youth as a newspaper carrier and is working his way up to publisher in 1978 and continues to write its daily editorials. We are, we are grateful for, uh, for this honor and on behalf of the family, I express thanks to Middle Tennessee State University. What an outstanding group of people. A nice round of applause to all of them again, if you would, please. The Tennessee Journalism Hall of Fame will be housed at the John Bragg Mass Communication Building inside the Center for Innovation in Media. We'll be right back. As the governor of Tennessee, I can tell you you're part of something bigger that's going on. And your willingness and your commitment to do what you've done uh, speaks volumes for who you are and I think uh, portends great things for the future of the state of Tennessee. We started in 1911 with a clear mission to train Tennessee's best teachers. For the last 100 years, Middle Tennessee State University has carried out that mission and so much more. Nationally recognized as an affordable quality university, the number one choice of undergraduates in Tennessee. As we celebrate our centennial, we look with pride at the past. We look forward to the future. Check out why we're Tennessee's best. MTSU is quickly becoming known as a center for research. We are building the future through innovative programs and forging partnerships with vital industries in Middle Tennessee. With Tennessee's only master's degrees in professional science, recording arts and technologies, and aviation, our mission is to pursue creation, innovation, and discovery at the College of Graduate Studies at MTSU. Being True Blue is giving your all on and off the court. My name is Ebony Rowe and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is embracing unique perspectives. My name is Iris Montes and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is helping students solve real world problems. My name is Cliff Ricketts and I am True Blue. Being True Blue is making the world a safer place. My name is Sam Willie, and I am True Blue. On May 11th, MTSU conferred degrees to a record 2,642 students during spring commencement ceremonies. In addition to the 2,115 undergraduate degrees, 
527 graduate students and 12 doctoral degrees. The university's first ever honorary degrees were awarded to two prominent graduates. This is a day of celebration, especially for our graduates. This is just the beginning of even greater things to come. Join me in welcoming to our podium my good friend, the governor of this great state of Tennessee, Bill Hassan. Thank you, thank you. I hope that you will be people of grace. You know, a whole lot of people in the world spend all their time looking for the faults of others. And then when they find them, they spend a whole lot of time talking about the faults of others. Well, I have a not so well-known secret. It's not hard to find most of our faults. Graduates, congratulations on finishing this leg of the journey. As the governor of Tennessee, I can tell you, you're part of something bigger that's going on. And your willingness and your commitment to do what you've done uh, speaks volumes for who you are and I think uh, portends great things for the future of the state of Tennessee. Congratulations. The first recipient of the Honorary Do Doctorate of Letters degree is the Honorable Bart Gordon, former United States Congressman and MTSU alumnus. Bart Gordon is a third generation Blue Raider. He graduated with honors from MTSU in 1971 and served in the Army Reserves from 1971 to 1972. From 1974 to 1983, he practiced law in Murfreesboro and worked for the Tennessee Democratic Party. In 1984, Mr. Gordon was elected to Congress as the representative of Tennessee's 6th District. This afternoon's recipient of the Honorary Doctorate of Letters degree is the late Dr. James M. Buchanan. I confer posthumously upon Dr. James Buchanan uh, to be accepted by his sister, um, Miss Liz Bradley, a graduate of this university, the Honorary Doctorate of Letters. Born in Rutherford County, James Buchanan lived at home and did farm work while majoring in mathematics, English literature, and social science. Dr. Buchanan was awarded the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 1986 for his work on the public choice theory of economics. Accepting Dr. Buchanan's degree on behalf of his family is Ms. Liz Bradley, Dr. Buchanan's sister, an MTSU alumnus and former principal of the Homer Pittards Campus School. The deans and I present 12 doctoral candidates the deans and I present a total of 510 candidates for the master's and specialist degrees. The deans and I present a total of 2,115 candidates for the bachelor's degree. Graduates, please move your tassel from the right to the left side of your cap. Congratulations. For more information on MTSU News, be sure to go to mtsunews.com. That's it for this edition of Out of the Blue. Until next time, stay true blue.